In my last video, I showed you some principles of texturing. Today, we're going to look at some real examples of how to use textures and how to decide on their properties. My first example is this bar stool I made for a kitchen project. Here's a quick glance of the project. It was actually built like that. The seat itself was made using the subdivision object, by the way. So let's look at the textures. For reflectivity, I used the built-in plastic shader. No change is made, it works fine for this effect. Notice how the plastic shows a dark edge like the real object. You can get that by using a glass shader and adding an absorption color. You may have noticed the brushed appearance of the metal surfaces too. This is added by the metal shader if it's set to brushed. Some direct light helps to bring out the effect. You can play with reflectivity and blurriness and combine with brushed or turned to achieve different metals. If you want to create gold or other colored metals, a color must be added to the reflectivity's color. The plastic footrest uses the same shader for reflectivity as the seat, but with 2% reflection and 20% blurriness to get a nice matte gloss. For extra roughness, I added some noise for bump. Looks exactly like plastic. Lastly, the stone floor uses a slight displacement for the angle of the tiles and the depth of the joints. It adds just a little glistening of light along the edges. Combining displacement with lighting allows for some pretty spectacular effects. I wanted this fluorescent lamp fixture to show the typical light pattern that is created by this kind of profiled transparent surface. By adding a displacement to the bump channel, this was made possible. Next, rendering fabrics is important in interior scenes. Renderworks has all the tools built in to create all your fabric textures. Notice how the bright sun lights up the curtain? Let's have a look at its texture to find out how it's achieved. Just a quick tip, if you name your resources cleanly like fabric-curtain, the resource manager will group them more conveniently. You can also search for the texture type and if you switch the search to the current document, you will only see the type you want. So, let's see. Well, this is a surprisingly simple setup. Reflectivity is set to 75% backlit plus 75% blurriness. That's all we need here. I'm just going to zoom in a bit to show the velvet sofa. Do you notice how soft it looks? Even some light fluff is visible on the surface. You can get this effect by combining image-based properties with procedural ones in the same texture. The image is a photo of some coarse linen. To get it to look green, there's no need to go to Photoshop, just use the color filter option to tint it blue-green. The important bit is the reflectivity channel. It's set to glass, which is a property also known as Fresnel. What it does is, it applies a reflection based on the curvature and orientation of a surface. That's how the velvet effect is achieved. The more you decrease the value for blurriness, the more satiny the texture will look. To get the fluff to appear on the surface, the color texture is reused and set to a very high bump value. Here's a quick example of how you can set the reflection and blurriness to just parts of the texture by using a bitmap for reflection. The lighter areas of the floor texture will have much more reflectivity than the darker areas. Since the image used for this is already quite dark, 100% reflection has been applied. We also have some special camera effects here, which we'll look at in one of the upcoming videos. OK, so we've already seen a little bit about the grass shader. I want to add three more tips on its usage. As you can see in this photo of a newly finished residential project, the grass is not uniform. It has some outgrown patches and some color variation as well. You can actually get that effect by layering two identical objects. In this case, the layer containing the terrain model was duplicated and some shorter, more yellow grass texture applied to it. When rendered in a viewport with both layers visible, you get the effect. Here's the principle of how it works. The extrudes used here are actually perfectly flat. The waviness comes about solely through the texture. So when we look at the texture, we see that displacement is set through a noise shader with a height of 180 millimeters. So this is a good way to create slightly rougher grass if needed. Okay, let's go back to our project. In case you hadn't noticed, the pebble bed around the house is also a grass shader with some very short, thick and twisted blades and an underlying pebble texture. But that's not quite all. Let's go visit inside. Here's a photo of the finished project again with a woolly carpet. You've probably guessed it, that's a grass shader too. So when I zoom in you can actually see individual fibers. 
This shade has been set to 100% density because of the curvature of the edge. You can get away with 80% or even less if no edge is present or when you have a coarser texture. So that's all for today. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.